Hey, Jojo and the Morning family, I hope you are having a really, really good day. I hope it's okay with you, but today I'm just going to kind of lean back in my chair and just kind of talk to you about something that I always do. I've seen a lot of people not do this, and it's been a downfall for their life, their ministry, their business, their marriage, everything. And this is real simple. So I just kind of want to chat with you a little bit about it. And I want you to always remember to keep the main thing the main thing. Now, the main thing over every main thing is your personal walk with God your personal relationship with Jesus Christ and having communication with the Holy Spirit, okay? And that is the main thing. If if that's not right, nothing else will work. You know, y'all know my life scripture. Um, Years ago, I was probably 20, I remember I was sitting on the steps at the altar at a church that I was going to at the time. I ended up working there shortly after. But I remember I asked God, I said, God, what's what's my life scripture? And the Lord gave me Mark 135. Jesus got up early in the morning, went to a solitary place where he prayed. So ever since then, I get up every morning. I'm 49 years young. That was 29 years ago. I still wake up every morning and spend time with God to start my day. Why? Because that is the main thing. Now, we're going to move on to other things in life. And you can tell if things are going good or not. Like in marriage, this is my advice I give to everybody. To have a successful marriage, you should always prefer your spouse over yourself. You should always prefer your spouse over yourself. And if the relationship is a one-way give, one-way take, it's not going to work. But when both people, the man and the woman, you know, they prefer their spouse over their self. That is the main thing. You know, I remember one time we were doing a series uh, I did at a church I was at, and it was a series I did, and it was called Where's My Fairy Tale? And I remember we had a rather large young adult ministry, and and I asked these ladies, a hundred young college-age young adult ladies, my wife and I asked them, you know, what were the top four things and, and guys, and, and it was so funny because men thought, you know, looks was number one, but, but it wasn't. It was their walk with God. Are they emotionally stable? Then finances, then looks. And so a lot of guys were like, man, we've been going to the gym and working out and all this. And we thought that was the main thing they want, but actually it was number four. And, you know, in, in marriage, you, you prefer your spouse over yourself. You know, that's what I love about the book, The Five Love Languages. Um, I actually believe my wife is all five, but I know what her number one love language is. She knows what mine is. Um, And so that is good. I've seen a lot of people start ministries and they start thriving and then they become professionals in whatever they're doing. And then their ministry starts to fail. And then when they ask me like, hey man, you know, why do you think my ministry is failing? And I said, well, I remember when you started you know, this was number one, this was number two. These were like your top two things that, you know, your main things you wanted to focus on and you've completely got away from it because you have moved into now being a more of a professional in what you're doing. There is no professional ministers, okay? (laughs) Uh, It's all prayer and relationship with God. I've seen people who start businesses and, and they would say, you know, I want to start my business with, And they would say stuff. I remember a a, a guy who had a business that I I know real well. And he started with like four guys. And every morning they would get together and they would, you know, they would pray about 10 minutes before they went out. Then he grew to six people, then eight people, then 10, 12, 15, 20, 25 employees. I mean, they were. And and then one day he said, man, business isn't working. And he said, this isn't working. This isn't working. This isn't. And he started doing everything that wasn't working. And I said, when did it start going bad? He said, about a year ago. It's okay. Well, when did you stop praying every morning before work? He goes, about a year ago. I said, well, man, I remember you told me that you would always pray before work and you would dedicate your business to the Lord, you know, and if 
if someone didn't want to be a part of it, that's fine. You know, they didn't have to pray, but you and, and the workers would. He said, oh, well, a few guys were like, oh, we're too busy. We need to get to work early. We need to do this. We need to do that. And, and so we just kind of got away from it. And I said, man, well, when you started your business, that was the main thing. You know, keep the main thing the main thing. And so many times in life, we get away from the main thing. And when, when that happens, you, you get off track. You know, a house, you can redecorate a house. You can paint the outside, repaint it. You can paint the you know, inside of the, the walls, different color. You can hang different lights. You can get new pictures. You can even get new furniture. You can do rearrange furniture. You can do all that. But your foundation stays the same. You know, so many times I've seen ministers who get caught up in who they are and what they're they're doing that they forget their love for for God and God's people you know hey I've, I've been there before I've, I've had times when the Lord checked me up about while I why I was doing what I was doing when I was younger I got broken by God about about 11 years ago it was just a time that you know, ministry was exploding. Things were great. I was traveling. I was preaching all these conferences. I mean, just big stuff. It was good. And then the Lord just reminded me, hey, you do ministry as much for yourself as you do for me. And I was like, whoa, heart check time, you know. I have to keep the main thing the main thing. And then I went through a season of just, you know, brokenness before God. And then after that, you know, God's opened so many doors that I, I, I do things I never could have imagined doing. But the thing is, even though I always kept prayer in the morning, I became, you know, arrogant and prideful. And so now, um, once I've just lived in this place of being broken before God and keeping the main thing, the main thing, um, like I said, I always kept my morning prayer. But I'm talking about like the purpose of ministry and just, you know, to pour out what God gives. You know, everything has just escalated and went to a degree I never thought it could go to because I kept the main thing, the main thing. You know, my wife and I have been married for 23 years. We have a great marriage. We've got three phenomenal kids, an awesome little cavapoo pup. And, and I owe it all to God because I've kept the main thing, the main thing. We run a multi-million dollar health coaching business with Optavia. I remember when we first started that business, the Lord told me, always focus on people, not on money. I knew right then this business was about to explode. You know, whenever we started our, our you know, we do videos for YouTube, Facebook, and Rumble. I remember when we started doing that, you know, the Lord said, don't ever get caught up in the views, the likes, the who shares, and all this say what I what I give you, do what I tell you to do, put that out. And as I just kept moving into that, I kept the main thing, the main thing. And if you can learn to steward your life and keep the main thing, the main thing in everything that you do, you're going to find out you're not going to have pressure, as much pressure. In this world, there's always, the Bible even says there's trials and tribulations and tests that comes from being in this world. But you're not going to have to worry. You're not going to have as much pressure on you as the world has because you can rely on God when you're keeping the main thing, the main thing, and you're doing, you know, everything that God has called you to do. And remember that when God lays something on your heart, there is a reason he laid it on your heart. He laid it on your heart um, as a ministry business that he wants you to start or an undertaking or something. And so when, when you do that, uh, the main reason you do stuff is because God entrusts you with it and he laid it on your heart to do it. And when you keep the main thing, the main thing, it just shifts. It shifts everything that you do. And so I just want to encourage you with that today. I see so many people who start off in, in ministry and then they, they just fizzle out, they burn out. Like, I don't, I don't see how you burn out in ministry. I just, I, I don't. I've never burned out. Like, there's times we were going and blowing and church was great and books were selling and YouTube was great. I'm doing 
video calls and I'm traveling and the Holy Spirit say in three weeks from Wednesday to Sunday I don't want you doing anything yes sir I don't care who calls I don't care who wants me to do a video conference with I mm -mm. I remember one time the the Holy Spirit somebody called me and asked me to preach at a conference that, that, that I'd, I'd watched online for years, powerful conference, asked me to preach at it. And I, I, I was about ready to say, yes, Holy Spirit, take that weekend off. And then I said, I'm sorry, I can't. And they said, uh, you got something else? I said, no, that's what the Holy Spirit said. Don't plan anything that weekend. Man, my wife and I and our kids had the absolute best time. We didn't go anywhere, went out to eat, you know, I think we watched like a movie. We just hung out. We had the best time. Nothing can replace that. Okay? They're my first ministry. You minister unto the Lord, and then your family, okay? And so follow the leading of the Lord, and you're not going to burn out. You're going to know when to take a break, when to rest, and also when to push through, when to go on a fast. I mean, He'll guide you and lead you. That's what it says in Psalms 30. Two and eight, you know, he'll guide you and lead you with his eyes upon you. He'll, he's got you, okay? And so I love you guys, and, and I just want you to, to know that, that you're phenomenal. I appreciate y'all watching, and stay focused on the Lord. We're, we're, we're in a good season right now. It's not the easiest season, but, but we're in a good season, okay? So I sure love y'all, and I, wanna, I just want to personally thank all of our financial partners. I mean... I put a lot of effort into this, this show, and I appreciate the people that sow, uh, the one-time gifts and our monthly partners, and then our prayer partners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for praying for Autumn and I and our kids. I feel it. I mean, I feel your prayers every single day. Thank you so much. All right? Well, I love y'all. Hope this helped. And remember, keep the main thing the main thing in everything that you do.